Hi. It's Tyler. How you doing? And I want to explain to you. You say, what's wrong with this video? It's, it's, I want you to see this chair here. This empty chair. This chair has been empty from before December 2019. That was Tracy's chair. Now she's gone. God took her because of pain. That chair there is where Tracy sat every night we did our family Bible study. Rachel sat over there on the couch. I sit in my chair. That's where Tracy would sit. We would hold hands and watch a TV program or a movie before we went to bed. Tracy would sit here when she could. When I do my Bible study right here, my Bible reading, my own, and she would go outside and, you know, do what she did out there. That chair is empty. Now, what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to explain to you is, it's very hard to explain. Because let me tell you, Jesus Christ God the Father has fulfilled my life excellently. Today we went to the farmer's market and it was nothing spectacular. Nobody got saved in front of us. No one's come out today and, you know, I want to live right. We had a woman come up to me telling me God hates me for what I do. That's kind of comical. I went down to the beach and I tried to give a guy a gospel track and he asked for prayer. <laughs> that blew me. And then I prayed for the guy. And I, I'm not one of them long prayer people. <laughs> I'm nothing against it. And I pray, he goes, man, keep on praying. I was like, and you know, I prayed for him, Rodney. I tried to pray for his salvation because I couldn't get nothing out of him. And the Lord deal with his heart through Jesus. And I'm not satisfied with the ministry. I want more. But I love the Lord. I want to try to get more gospel tracts out. I want to try to help people. Today, I had a woman. And, you know, she's Yahweh. And, giving all, you know, give all her money and go travel the world for Jesus, of course. And... As a Christian, she likes the taste of beer and likes going clubbing. And when you're going to profess to be a Christian, my ministry is now, listen, you need to shut up. Because you're not sorry for your sins and you're not repentant of your sins. And I'm going to speak up. I enjoy doing that. I didn't do it rudely. I didn't do it cruelly. Just like, that's not right. Then she wrote back saying, well, she, I'm an ordained minister, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote back, you know, Timothy here, a woman should not assert the authority over a man. And that end of the conversation usually does. And I want to tell you, I am happy. I am pleased in the Lord. You should have been here yesterday. You see, my man, I was just glorifying God. I, I had my instrumental hymns on and I was just reading my Bible and studying and, and just loving the Lord. And I do. I love the Lord. I am saved. I'm saved. You know, you know the story. April 7th, 1987. I had many years backsliding. I hate to say, but I've been on fire for the Lord. Now, many of you know me. I've been married twice. Lisa and Tracy. And I hope my posts don't seem like I'm a Mormon married two women at a time. It's not the case. 1991, I married Lisa. Lisa and I met through a singles magazine. You sent it in. You paid for the subscription. It went out to southeastern Connecticut. You picked it up. You opened it and said, oh, this guy looks good. And Lisa wrote me. And I wrote her back, and we got to meet each other. And 
Uh, I'm sorry, my mind is going. I, I forget things. I forget most of my daughters growing up, and that makes me really sad. I don't know why I don't remember my daughter growing up. I don't remember where Lisa and I first went out. And she told me, she says she went home and she had written another guy. She, he had taken her to the movies. And she told me, she said, she asked her mother, she said, I really like that style. I love him. But I asked this other guy, I told him I'd go out with him. And her mother said, well, who do you love? Because I love Stiley. He, he's great. So she dropped the other guy and started dating me. And we started getting serious. And I said, Lisa, I was backslidden. I said, Lisa, I said, we got to talk to somebody before we go any further on a relationship. She said, sure. Who? I said, get in the car. I knew how to witness the people. But I knew she loved me very much. And I didn't want her love for me to interfere what was going to happen. So I drove to my pat. well, I wasn't in the church that time, but my pastor's house. I had already made a, you know, a appointment. And we sat in his office and, you know, I want to come back to church. It was my fault. I want to get right with the Lord. This is Lisa Rissal. I've been dating her. And if you would, you would witness to her. And Lisa had no ideas, no preparation. So I sat back just listening in the pastor's office and he witnessed to her. And I've written here. Lisa was baptized 7-21-91. And I, you would go back seven days. Because it was on a Saturday. Like mine was a Saturday. And like me, Sunday morning, she went back to the church and told her. In that office on that Saturday, whatever seven days from that is, she received the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. She did not know she was not saved. Never gone to church. Mother was Catholic, father is Episcopalian. And then she told me in the car on the way home, we need to go to church. I said, yep. She went to church the next day. She, she made the public statement like I did. She got saved. And the week, the next Sunday, she was baptized. And we went to church Sunday. And we went out. It was either Monday or Tuesday. And I proposed to her. And she was thrilled. I wasn't going to marry her because she, she didn't get saved. We were married November 2nd, 1991. At the Open Door Baptist Church in Falkentuck, Connecticut. At a, um, Pequot Trail Road. They had moved out of their, their old building in Falkentuck. Uh, Stonington, Stonington, excuse me. They moved out of their church in Pawkatuck. They sold it. They were meeting in a, a, a mason place while they were going about purchasing and getting land for the church. And November 2nd, 1991, we were married. A great upset to her family because I we're both Christians and we're both going to do right. Between the time that she got saved, I have 
I am saying there's no no words written down. 1991. So, a lot of things happened. In 723 of 09, Lisa had her the breast surgery removed from cancer. So she got saved in July and we were married in November. And between those dates of going back to church, I finally gave it up liquor. That's what I wanted to say. She didn't drink, she didn't smoke. She was a good, clean girl, but she was lost. And she got her name written down in Land's Book of Life. We had our first child. And I, I'm limited what I can say. Uh, don't think I forgot. I, there's certain things I can't say. Some of you know why, some of you don't, but that's okay. And before her first child, she had non-Hopkins lymphoma. Her first cancer. And we went through the, we went through the chemotherapy. L and M, and she was cured of that cancer. And she was always worried that after that she got pregnant, if the drugs from the chemotherapy would have caused great harm to the child, it didn't. And then we had our daughter in June 2002. Now around 98, 99, I quit smoking. I smoke in the house. I subject my family to smoking. That's why I was lenient to Tracy. I just prayed that she quit. I know I know Lisa prayed for me to quit. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you what happened, Lisa. We were walking in the parking garage going to the car. And I collapsed on the hood of the car. I didn't get unconscious, but I just couldn't breathe. And I was diagnosed that time with emphysema. And the doctor told me I was going to die. I, I was three or six months, I forget what. And that must have been a shock to her and, and, and the child. Rachel wasn't around yet. And I still smoked. Doctor tried to get me to quit. I tell Lisa, I said, hide this pack of cigarettes when you go to work. And only give me another pack of cigarettes that you hid. I call you and I, I just, she do that. I knew she prayed. And finally one day, the doctor says, hey, there's a new product out there. I said, well, what is it? He says, it's, it's a patch. You put it on your arm. And you need a prescription. I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And I went to the pharmacy, which is not a pharmacy no more, over in Groton. I gave the I gave them the prescription, blah, blah, blah. Now, now carton of cigarettes, I, I smoked two or three packs of cigarettes at that time. Carton of cigarettes was like 20, 19 to twenty dollars. And this patch when the doctor filled, I mean, when the pharmacist filled and put it on the counter, he says it'll be $25. I said, that's ridiculous. You know, paying $20 for a carton of cigarette. I said, that's ridiculous. I ain't smoking. Now, this is somebody who would go to church with his wife. And I would go up to the altar. And I would leave my pack of cigarettes, half a pack of cigarettes, or how many left. I would leave them on the altar. And I would go home, stop at a store on the way home, buy them again. That moment at the pharmacy, that I, I forget. It was a Martin Luther Day, January. 98 or 99, I forget which year. And by the grace of God, that's something that foolish. I never smoked again. So we had our daughter. 2002, 
And we were able to pick her day. My grandma was born right around the first day of spring. My mom was born right around the first day of fall. So Rachel, we had had the first day of, we picked the day, June 17th, the first day of summer. And Lisa was pleased with both pregnancies. And she started getting gestational diabetes. And she had to check her blood and give herself insulin and medication. And as husband and wife with our children, we both homeschooled the children. What subjects Lisa felt comfortable with, she did. What, what subjects I felt comfortable in, I did. But she always left the Bible to me. She knew that the Bible was to be taught by her husband, by a man, according to the scriptures. She would listen to me. And then... I forget what year it is. I, I just typed it up the other day. I, I forget. Um, Rachel, give me that grade card that I gave you the other day of school, please. And I had I had to call him for the Lord to preach. And I told Lisa. She says, well, you got to do something about it. I, I don't know what to do. I just feel God calling me. This is 2007. No, excuse me, 2005. 2005, I started school. And this is this is what I'm talking about right now. So she said, well, go, let's go talk to the pastor. I said, okay. So we went to talk to the pastor. I said, I'm feeling called to preach. And we were both there. And I, I don't remember what I said or anything like that. So, again, that was a Saturday. And on Sunday, the pastor got up. He says, I would like to, I'd like to make an announcement. We've got somebody who's being called to preach in this church. And I am going to send him to the school that I went to. This is the pastor. And I'm going to call out Joe. Will you please stand up and show everybody who you are? And when Connor, Lisa, and I, what was that? I said, I don't know. She says, you really feel being called the priest? I said, yes, I do. She said, well, we've got to go to another church. There's something wrong. And there were other issues that, that we had with, with the pastor or something like that. I'm not, we're not talking about the pastor. What I'm, what I'm trying to show to you is that Lisa backed me up all the way. When family and friends and Christians went against me, Lisa did not. And her co-workers told me, you know, we would say things about you and she would just defend you. This was at the funeral and then the, the you know, the meal after the funeral. And I started going to school and I, I had a great brother in the Lord show me the, this charity Baptist Institute. And she helped me. She encouraged me, as a wife should, as a Christian wife should. It was a lot of hard work. And then I told her, I says, I said, you know, I says, I can get involved in a prison ministry. She says, we'll do it. I says, it's going to be Thursday night, I think it was, Tuesday or Thursday night. You're going, you're going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. She says, well, that's okay. I'll wait up for you when you get home. All right, okay. So she was in great involved with that. And during time, I forget when it was. I said, I said, Lisa, I said, I said, Lord's calling me to preach. I said, what if He calls me to another country? And I started. This is when I started understanding mission. I said, what would you say if God called me to go somewhere else? She said, I'll follow you wherever you go. Now that touched my heart. So a fool I was, I, I, I felt the Lord was trying to start 
had me to start a church. I was too young, too early in the ministry, but she didn't fight me or anything, but she said, okay, let's do it. And because of that, we were kicked out of the church. We were de church because I, I didn't get permission from the pastor to set out to get a church. And official letter went out to everybody, whatever style he's doing, what endeavor he does. We're not honoring it at this church. Now, I witnessed and Lisa witnessed to both her parents. Her mom died at Women's Center in Boston, Massachusetts, most likely by her attitude as a lost Catholic. She was one of them angry Catholics that didn't go to church. That's, Lisa would tell you the same thing if she was here. But let me tell you something else. On a revival service in June, I think, in June 22nd, 2003, we were having a revival service and Lisa did nursery. She loved it. And there was a woman in the church service, and she told she went down to the nursery. Was was downstairs. Said you got to get up in the assembly hall now. I'll take over for you. She says your husband and your father Wally are at the church altar right now. He's about to get saved. And Lisa, not, not only did I witness Lisa's salvation, but Lisa and I witnessed her father being saved, and we're still <coughs> great and close to each other. Now, there's no marriage perfect. I ain't a perfect husband. Lisa had done something. You don't need to know. You don't need to care, but... And it, she was in the hospital room, and she told me, she says, Dolly, forgive me, please. I said, I will. I do. I love you. She says, I love you. I'm sorry. She came home for a week, and it was a trying week. That she couldn't just barely walk up the stairs. We got her walking up the stairs. The bathroom was upstairs. We had to have a commode downstairs. And we tried. Physical therapy came. It looked like she was getting strong. She had cancer. Breast cancer. And I read you the date that she had the surgery where her breast was removed. And I remember that morning when we went to that surgery... The next day would be the surgery. When she admitted to the hospital, she goes, I'm afraid that you're not going to look up at me as a woman because I'll be missing a breast. Okay, to be frank, the breast is the part of the woman that I like. I said, that doesn't count. I said, your health is what counts. So we went through all the chemotherapy. And Lisa, was, I can't say the word, she put things off, whatever that pernascate word is. No way she put things off, bad. And I had to encourage her. And the, doc, and the doctor was so thrilled. We were at the NFA ministry. And he took gospel tracts and, and just because our family served the Lord and because of love we gave to Lisa. Lisa went back in the hospital after that week with the PT and all that. And we were there in the hospital. Listen, every time she was in the hospital, we were there. Me and the kids and her father. 
and we would feed her. And we gave her, they given her spaghetti, we were letting her eat the spaghetti. And she threw it up, and she was all upset that she threw up the spaghetti, and it's okay. So we said our goodbyes, and we kissed each other. And we went home. She said she loved me, and I told her I love her. And it meant it. I got a phone call at 4 o'clock in the morning saying things are not looking well. We're going to do more tests. We're going to do more work. I, I didn't think nothing. I, I went back to sleep. I had no idea. Seven o'clock in the morning, he said, you need to come now. She's taking a turn for the worse. I did not know what that meant. And when we got to the hospital, she was breathing. <laughs> she was not, she not, not, not aware. I don't think she was. Doctor said she was, but I'm trying to say it. She couldn't talk. She couldn't open her eyes. And if you're in the medical field, you, you maybe you know. But and I had a thing was I could irritate Lisa. <laughs> I had that gift. And I figured what I'd do is I'll irritate her enough to where she'll get back to normal. And I just trimmed my beard and she didn't like how prickly it was. And I said, what I'm going to do, dear, I'm going to put my arms around you in the hospital bed. I'm going to give you the biggest kiss. I'm going to let my beard rub against you. And I did. With my arms around Lisa, at the moment I gave her a kiss, she died and went to glory. The doctor that knew us said, she's been waiting for you. The doctor knew I was going to kiss her. She knew I was going to kiss her. And Lisa went home from this world in my arms, kissing her. That was it. That was her last breath. So like I am today, I'm distraught, I, I'm, I'm alone, I, I, I'm, I'm married, I'm a widower, and I went crazy like I'm going crazy today. I love marriage, I love being married, I, I love my wife Lisa, I wanted her back, I wanted to be loved, and I want to be loved. This is not nothing new to me. This is something that's happened to me before in 2010. And I dated a few times, or you want to call it dates, and, and nothing worked out. So I'm sitting on Facebook one day at my, we moved into my father-in-law's house. And I'm sitting one day on Facebook. And I'm preparing to move to Florida. Packing up, leaving Connecticut on Florida. I get a Facebook IM message where it was from Tracy. Hey, Tracy. It wasn't Hayward yet. Tracy says, you want me to come and help you take care of the kids? Now, at that point, Tracy thought my kids were younger with the pictures and all that. She didn't realize how old they were. Remember, I'm distraught just like I am today. I am lonely just like I am today. And Tracy scared the fire out of me. We had gone to school before. We went to high school, and I dropped out of that school. My friend, uh, no, my whatever comes after freshman. I asked Tracy out one time. She don't remember it. I did. I remember. There were two things that caught my attention if you were listening before. So. Now, at this point in Tracy's life, she just had her surgery of her breast. She had one removed at one time and she just had one removed in 2011. She had just come out of the hospital. When she said, can I help you with your children? That scared me. That spooked me. I backed off. Said, what is this woman's? When I'm looking for a wife, I'm praying to the Lord. I just started seeing this other woman. I'm like, Lord, is this it? This is it. 
Tracy got on Facebook. She's distraught. She, she, it's, I'm not, not going to get it. But she had all kinds of problems in her life. I, I, I said, Tracy, I says, you want to talk? I said, you offered to help me out. Can I help you out? She says, yes, where? I said, Gail's Ferry, because she lived in Ledger, I lived in North. I said, Gail's Ferry, Dunkin' Donuts, I'll meet you now. She got it. And we were there for two, three, four, maybe five hours. And God had a Ledger cop sit in that parking lot because he, God knows, Sally, you're a crazy man. I am not a man, I don't like when I meet people and they come up and hug you. I hate that. The only one person I'm supposed to hug is my children and my wife. And Tracy, I, I was hugging her because she, she's, she was going to commit suicide at one point. And we talked and we talked. And she talked and talked. And then she says, you know, it's just, she goes, the, Dunkin' Donuts closed at a certain hour. She says, I got to go to the bathroom. We got it. She says, I don't want to, but I got to end this thing. I said, okay, well, we'll get back together. We'll talk. So I'm driving home on Route 12, and I, I come on to get to, to my father-in-law's house. I, come, I turn on Boswell Avenue, and I'm by the Norwich Bolton, and the Lord spoke to me. He says, that's the woman you're going to marry. She's saved. She's got troubles. She's got problems. That's the one. Now, Tracy was saved before high school. She never witnessed. She never told us. She never told us about Jesus. So I, I got a hold of Tracy again, and I said, Tracy, she goes, yeah, I said, we're getting married. But I want you to know I'm no ordinary Christian. I'm a Bible-believing, preaching Christian. And from that day forth for Tracy, I became her preacher teacher. And she would tell everybody, I have met a preacher, and he's my teacher. And both Lisa and Tracy, if I told them the Bible, if I told them church history, and we're not going to do this no more, we would not do it. There would be no fuss, no problem. This is what we're going to do now because this is what the Bible is. be no fuss, no troubles. We would do it. Both of them. So I put off my plans. I had to for coming down to Florida with a church that was going to sponsor me and in front of Tracy and when I asked her father if I could have her hand in marriage we called the pastor in Port Orange Florida and said listen will you explain to her father what we're going to do the pastor of the church and I got well they're both have gone on but he's going to be a, a, a evangelist we're going to give him a route and when he's home he's going to have a teaching position at our uh uh Institute that we're going to start. Stiley will be coming down to Port Orange, a member of this church. He's already a member of this church, and he will have already an office in this church, and we'll give him the keys to the church and stuff like that. And her father said, You know, I trust you. Take her. And at that point, she was mistreated by her family. At that point, she says, Stiley, I said, she says, I got to go to the cancer doctor and, and get, this is the final appointment. Will you come with me? I said, sure, let's go. And the same cancer doctor that Tracy had was the same cancer doctor that Lisa had. So I'm sitting in the room. She's sitting up on the table where patients sit. I'm sitting in a chair. I'm looking at a magazine or book or something. And Dr. Pagnosi walk, opens the door, you know, knocks and walks in. He goes, oh, what is this? And Tracy ran up the table. She goes, that's my preacher teacher, man. We're going to get married and we're going to Florida. And he's going to be an evangelist. Now, it wasn't so hot. 
Tracy was married before me, and it wasn't so hot a relationship. That doctor broke down in tears and said, I thank God you two are together. He said, Tracy, that man loved his wife, and he'll love you. And he turned to me, apologized for Lisa's death. That was another insurance of Tracy that I was to be the man in her life. Yet she was divorced. Whatever you want to do, you great Baptist, you, you're without sin. I'll give you some rocks. And then there was another time. And I knew there was no support for her with doctors and, and everything. She, she says, Stiley, I, I got to go to the, the gynecology. I got something in me. They got to take it out. I said, okay. And let me tell you, there was a lot of blood. I didn't see anything I was not supposed to see. But I saw blood. Towels, white men, all that other stuff. I hate blood. I get sick at blood. By the grace of God, I did not pass out in that room. And that doctor and the nurse were sitting there making fun of me because that guy's going to pass out. And Tracy looked at me and says, you love me enough that you did not leave me? I said, nope. I'm not going to leave you. She loved the name Hayward. And she found out that in Colchester, there's a city named Hayward. And Tracy was much into Bible history and the Baptist church history. We went to Newport, Rhode Island. We found the first Baptist church in America. We found the first Jewish synagogue in America right around the corner. We found the grave sites of those people that started those church, that they are in the Baptist book. We started in Norwich with the separatists and the, 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 the congregational church toward uh, fighting the separatists, which would be Baptists. We went and looked at all those areas. We got pictures of them, and we, we did that study. And she learned that the Greens in New England were places where preachers would go and preach. Like I preach at the farmer's market. And she said, there's a Hayward in, in Connecticut. I said, yeah, and it well, no to me. She said, there's a Hayward Green in Colchester. I said, okay, yeah. She said, I want to be Mrs. Stiley Hayward, and I want our marriage certificate to say Hayward, Connecticut. It kind of says Hayward, Connecticut, but also it's Colchester. And she was more thrilled that after we got married, when she saw the, 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 met, the marriage license, the marriage license not only said Hayward, Connecticut, it also said Hayward Avenue. So she came down to Florida with me as husband and wife, as her preacher and teacher. And let me tell you, all the public ministries she was involved in, Daytona 500s, there she was passing out tracts, and every year she got medically worse. She would be standing, and then she had to walk her. And a cane. I think one time she was in the wheelchair. She was at the very first time at the farmer's market well, six years ago. She is the reason why we, we are preaching at the farmer's market. We went to the farmer's market and said, you know what, let's just go pass out some gospel track and we'll, that'll be that. She said, let's go. I worked third shift, so I took a nap and we went out and we passed. She passes out the first gospel track. And the first one she passes out is the person in charge of the farmer's market, and they kicked us out. Now, let me tell you what happened to church in Port Orange. They got rid of us. He tried to accuse me of being Paul Onlyism, which I didn't know at that point what that was, but he didn't want us in that church. And Tracy and I had our own speculation. We've gone to another church. And we left that church because of King James Bible, but he started saying, you know, he's going to build rooms in heaven instead of a mansion, and instead of verily, verily, uh, truly, truly. 
But the evangelist, the the instructor of the institute, that never happened in Port Orange. Never. And we started going out in public ministries and, and we do the ocean walk down here. It's, it's a big area where people go. There's concerts. We pass out gospel tracts. She's sitting in a chair. She she was a gospel tract queen. <laughs> When we had the flea market, she was in charge of the chick tracks. Rachel was in charge of the booklets. And both of them together, they got it out. This is a woman who did not witness in school because she didn't know how. When she came under me, she would witness. Lisa became born again a few months before we got married. And I was told at her funeral that people from Electric Boat came to me and said they would gotten saved by what Lisa had taught them and showed them. Lisa was an instrument of people getting saved. Tracy was an instrument of people getting saved. People would say they were grown in the Lord because of what Lisa had done. People had grown in the Lord what Tracy had done. I had two wives active in loving me and taking care of me and actively in loving taking care of Jesus Christ. Daytona 500s, the bike weeks, the public ministries, Tracy would be, both Lisa and Tracy would be in the points of their life, they would be there when they could. Medical cancer brought their public ministry to deterioration. Lisa would be there when she could, and Tracy got to the point she would be there when she could. And I get back to the farmer's market. I came home one day. I said, Tracy, guess what we're going to do? She goes, what? I said, you love me preaching and teaching? She goes, yes. We're going down to the farmer's market. I'm going to preach on the streets. I'm going to be a street preacher. Oh, she loved that. And I've been doing it for six years. Kind of way Tracy started that through the Lord. The flea market died out because we didn't realize that Tracy was going to die. And get sicker and sicker. Tracy ended up having uh, lung cancer. Now, both my wife loved me remarkably, and there's testimony by all the people with them. Lisa befriended a, a, a missionary of Russia and a, and a, a missionary and, and, and going to Russia, and she met a man who had this guy was so funny, he had his pockets full of tracks and they would fall out. You had to bend over and pick them up. I didn't carry that much track. Lisa would read her Bible at, 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 at her job. Tracy would read her Bible. With Tracy, we started here as a family. We started Genesis 1, and we went through one chapter a night, if we could do. Some chapters were broken down to several nights, and we got all these on video. We got all these on SoundCloud. We had the Hayward's family ministry here. We would tape it, and we would share it with people for the Internet. I went from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. With my family and Tracy. And when we finished Revelation 22, we went back to Genesis 1 and we started all over. And we got to the book of Job. And Tracy got worse. And Tracy died in hospice. The day before she died, I walked in the room. She said, oh, the doctor. I said, no, not the doctor. I said, Tracy, you love me? She said, yes. I said, you know I love you? I always, I always tell Tracy, I said, Tracy, you know I love you. She goes, yes, I love you, Stiley. And from there at hospice, it went, it got worse and worse by the hour. One of the last few words that Tracy ever said she called out my name. She thought she was sinking in the bed or the bed was, she was drowning. And one of the last things she could orally say was, Stiley, help me. Now, that's important because she called me to help her. Of all the people in the world, she says, Stiley, help me. That meant a lot to me. may not mean a lot to you, but 
She was my wife and I loved her and she loved me. And I don't want to describe it as a heckle and jekyll, as a doctor, uh, 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 what, what are those two, the good guy and the bad guy, I forget what their name is. Because let me tell you, in the Lord, I feel great. I feel wonderful. I, I feel blessed. I feel loved. I know God's taking care of me. But the human side of me, I'm broken. Let me show you again. You see that chair? It's empty. Now, you may have a wife sitting next to you, may have a wife that you go to bed with. I don't. And I ain't just talking about sex. I held the hands of my wives all the time. I hugged my wives all the time. I made a public demonstration of my love for them all the time. Both my wives, we would cuddle ourselves to sleep. I am not crazy. I am not thinking about committing suicide. Though I'd love to have the rapture happen right now. But if the Lord's going to have me live longer, if the rapture is going to be a little longer, I don't want to be alone without a wife. I know God is with me. I know Jesus said I'll never leave or forsake thee, but I can't hold the head of Jesus. I can't look out when I'm preaching on the street and see no smiling face. I don't have a person anymore to encourage me to keep going like Lisa and Tracy did. It hurts on both sides of the hospital bed. And when God has blessed me too wonderfully, two wonderful wives, and I sit here, I don't have any of them today, what am I supposed to do? You need to get closer to the Lord. I am close to the Lord. I am thrilled with the Lord. I go to church of the King James Independent Baptist Church that is wonderful and great. And the preacher preaches the message. And boy, it hits me and I bow my head and I repent of my sins. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I'll be with you along the way. That is great. It's true. But this hand. It's not holding any hand anymore. Maybe you don't take the value of marriage and your wife or husband, whatever it be. Maybe you don't take it as high regarded as I do. The Bible says that if a man has a wife, he attained favor from God and that wife is from God. I am praying. I am earnestly pay, praying that God will send me another, a little like Lisa and a little like Tracy. I am not mad at God for taking them. I know God had to take them. Tenderly and softly, Jesus is calling. Calling you and me. He called them because they were in great Pain. When Lisa threw up that spaghetti, it was body telling her that the cancer had gone into her stomach. She had the cancer in her ear, and no ear, no throat, throat doctor, even at Yale New Haven Hospital, knew what she was going through. God did. It would be selfish if Lisa would still be alive today. It would be selfish if Tracy was still alive today. Because they'd be in great pain. My pastor told me that Tracy said she didn't want to do dialysis anymore. The hospice social worker sat here with my pastor here. 
I think it was his daughter or, or his wife, pastors, and told me that Tracy told her she was only doing dialysis because she loved me. Yeah, I had problems with Lisa, and I had problems with Tracy, and they had problems with me too. And if marriage is a favor of God, and if a wife is a gift of the Lord, I want God to give me a third wife. I want that blessing again. Will I quit? Will I get? No, I won't. But I'm hoping and praying that God will give me another wife. It's too early. You're not ready. September, Lisa died. October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Eight months later, God gave me Tracy. It may be eight months, it may be a year, it may be three months. I don't know. Some think that I'm, I'm a wild man, I'm going crazy, and I, no, I'm not. It's just when, when you've been through it twice, I've got two holes in my heart right now, and I'm ready for a third one. You say, well, Sally, will you take another sick wife? I'll, if she's a child of God, a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ and God, I'll take her. I'll be a little bit more stronger than I was with Tracy. I want, I listen, since I was a little boy, before I was long saved, I was a Catholic, and Catholic, you just pray. Since I was a little boy, I always wanted, I always wanted a wife. Now, there's a particular sin in my life, I'm not going to tell you, but that, that's been destructing me now. I am happy being loved, and I am happy being loved. Being, showing love. I am happy with one I can hold their hand. I am happy for one I can encourage, and they encourage me. I enjoy marriage. I enjoy both my marriages. I would like God to continue to have me be a husband again. I am perfectly sane. I am perfectly right in my mind. And maybe the fact is for a man who wants to be married, a man who wants to care for a wife, in this day and age where Christians make fun of their wives, and it's, it's a joke in the pulpit sometimes of churches I've been in where they, they mock marriage. You know, there's nothing. I, Lisa or Tracy, I have never complained about my wives to in the public. I've said things to my pastors to help me, but I have never mocked my wives in public, and I have, my wives have never mocked me in public. So if God has given me a great thing, and he has, life, serving him, an opportunity to get crowns and inheritance and hear well done, wonderful i want to keep serving the lord i want to keep singing in the choir i want to keep preaching i want to keep getting gospel tracks out and the lord advances me more and more and more and blesses me more and more and more amen my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life i know where i'm going to go when i die and between now and when i die please lord god will you give me another wife let her be loving to you and let you be loving upon her. And let us be loving together. Psalmist says a threefold cord uh, can't be broken, something like that. The threefold cord, God, me, and a wife. Because I know when there's one in the bed, Solomon says, I know there's no heat. And me personally, Stiley Hayward, I don't like that. I don't like not being without a wife. 
I'm going to keep going. If the Lord, do, Lord doesn't do it, then he doesn't do it. But I pray he does. I'm just rambling on. Just if you want to hear my personal statement, you want to hear you know what I have to say, here it is. I just turned the cassette on and just started talking. There's no notes. I am perfectly happy with, with my marriage with Lisa. I am perfectly happy with my marriage with Tracy. I just like to have a third one. No harm done to Lisa and no harm done to, to Tracy. But they're in glory now. I'm not. And I like to do it, Lord God, please. Lord, you're blessing us wonderfully. You're taking care of us wonderfully. This thing may shut off. God has blessed me wonderfully great. I just want one more blessing. Financial and, and, and a wife. The prayer in Proverbs. Lord, let me not be too rich. And Lord, please let me not be too poor. I would be content with another wife if the Lord would bless me. That's, that's my story. That's I don't know what more to say.